Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we have a manga review of chapter 934, Hyogoro the Flower. And this was a nice catch up chapter with most of the main groups assembled on Wano. And really for a chapter that was only 15 pages long, it felt nice and packed to me. It didn't have much in the way of huge pieces of information or massive storytelling progress, but it was filled with great character beats. And I found myself very much enjoying everything that was going on. These kind of chapters are great because they're very necessary to catch up and make sure that we're all on the right page with all of the impending craziness. And something that really helps with that is that we finally have a basic map of Wano. This came at just the right time because the geography of Wano is starting to get a a bit confusing and just trying to keep track of where all of these various villages are in relation to the flower capital and even Onigashima, it was getting a bit bleh. But speaking of, if you take a closer look at the map, Onigashima is drawn absolutely adorably. Very nice work, Kiku. But yeah, Wano as an island feels a lot more manageable now. It's less of a mysterious, gigantic expanse of land, but rather somewhere that we can start getting properly invested into. Interestingly, the only one of the six regions where nothing relevant has been placed yet is the bottom right one, Hakumai. But it does say that the Hapu port is there, which I imagine will be very important in regards to reaching Onigashima. But getting into some characters, one of the many groups we interact with this week are the Big Mom Pirates, consisting of Perispero, Daifuku, Smoothie, Flampe, Mont d'Or, Galette, and there are some other lesser known members in there as well, like Broy, Tablet, Bascate, and I think I saw Hachi. Yeah, after doing like three videos based on the Charlotte kids, I'm finally starting to become all right at recognizing all of them. And I hope the rest of you are too. If not, check out my Charlotte family Pokerap. During this time though, we have some nice confirmation that Katakuri is alive and well. So he hasn't been expelled or removed himself from the crew or any of the nonsense that was spouted online. They definitely seem to be talking about Katakuri as if he isn't here though. So he may very well be left overseeing Totland. But as the kids are speaking of Big Mom, it's becoming even more clear that most of them would probably be quite pleased if she was just removed from the world. And Perispero himself has very clearly thought about it because he was very quick to state that should such a thing happen, then they would all be renamed the Perispero Pirates, which was hilarious. <laughs> But then Smoothie has this fantastic line. The typical logic of this kind of situation doesn't apply to mama, you fools. And I don't know about you guys, but that feels like Oda just directly speaking to all of the current haters of Big Mom out there in the fan base. We've had their balls in a vice over this whole amnesia thing. In fact, her statement is pretty much the exact argument I made last week when I went on a bit of a tangent. The fact that anything is possible with this character is fantastic and her situation only gets better for me with every passing chapter. For example, this week, Big Mom had some wonderful comical moments when she was looking in Chopper's general direction whilst talking about being starving, especially the second one, actually. That time when she looked at him while referencing that Udon was pretty far away, Oda drew her with slightly narrowed eyes and just a more sly expression in general on her face. And I laughed out loud when I saw it, it was great. And just while we're on the script, there's a moment where Momonosuke is training on the crocodile shark thing, where he yells out something that he picked up from Zoro. In the translation I've read that word was snatch and I'm kind of at a loss for the meaning of that. And this is one of those situations where we will need to wait for the official translation, but a whole page is spent on the idea that what Momonosuke is yelling is also a spoken dialect of Kuri. Now there's no way we're spending a whole page on this for it to not be something important for the future. And I think this might reignite those theories that Zoro is from Wano, or perhaps his parents were from Wano, but the most likely answer in my mind is that his instructor Koshiro, not to be confused with Kyoshiro, is from Wano, and Zoro picked that up from him. I've always enjoyed that theory a lot because it also makes the whole Kuina thing make sense about him saying that she could never become a swordsman because she was a woman, which is a very Wano-like attitude. But yeah, just, just flagging that because whatever the hell happened on this page is going to come up again. Zoro does have some sort of connection here, whether it be direct or indirect. Moving to the Nami portion of the group now, and I think Kanjiro is eating a fish made by his devil fruit, but it, it actually looks drawn far too well. So, huh. Oh, and Robin has a great gag in this scene where she's being all dejected about not gathering enough intelligence before spouting off this huge list of incredibly important information and some information that's even not so important. I really like that. And I'm loving the new direction of comical Robin in general. It really does feel like she's had more comic moments in Wano than any other arc. And yeah, I'm sure that's probably not true, but her comedy is definitely shining in Wano. In regards to important information, there is definitely a poneglyph in the flower capital, but it was not the road poneglyph. And that is now suspected to be on Onigashima. Why they're separated like this though is an intriguing thought, because you'd think that someone like Kaido would have just scooped it up and plonked it wherever his road poneglyph was. And you have to imagine that this poneglyph is quite special though, if simply because of the narrative focus we're putting on it. 
even going so far as to detail what it's guarded by. It might actually be something really cool, like a guide of how to make poneglyphs. You know, something that Robin could read to Momonosuke because Odin was not able to pass the teachings down to him. And if that general idea was known by Orochi, then that may explain why Kaido has no interest in it, because a how-to guide has no real value, because what he really needs are the ones that have already been made. Still, a mysterious stone hidden deep within the area of the land of mysterious stone creation is going to be more important than your average mysterious stone, I would say. And now for some less relevant information, Quite a bit of time in this chapter, a surprising amount really, is also spent proposing the idea of going to a bathhouse, and not just by Nami, Robin, and Brooke, but this idea is also brought up separately by Sanji in the next portion as well, and here's kind of what I feared about this whole raid suit power. The word bathhouse is actually mentioned five times, three of which was Sanji, so we know where this is going. For better or worse, Sanji is going to collide with them there, and I hope that this whole bathhouse thing is used to serve some sort of greater plot, and not just be a classical ecchi manga moment. I mean, look, I like nudity as much as the next person, but we've got shit to do here on Wano. We cannot be wasting time entirely with comical subplots. Things are getting very interesting in the prisoner mine, though, because first of all, what the hell Eustace Kid has apparently escaped. I mean, that dude is probably just crushed. Almost every One Piece fans dream of seeing a Luffy Kid prison break team up. God damn it, kid. But yeah, that was an unexpected development and it, it actually does feel quite underwhelming. It's a tough proposition to reintroduce us to such a big character and then just say, well, he has disappeared now. I mean, yeah, there's always the potential that Kid hasn't actually escaped and this is some sort of greater plot. Like he's just hiding somewhere thanks to Ryzo or other factors. But uh, look, I'm happy to see where it goes, but for the purposes of reviewing this chapter individually, it just leaves a weird aftertaste. However, we did finally discover the identity of random old dude, and it's the title of the chapter actually, Hyogoro the Flower, the primary Yakuza in Wano two decades ago prior to the age of Kyoshiro. And while it's really hard to imagine this old dude being a Yakuza, at least in the way I think of them, he does all of a sudden serve an incredible purpose. His sort of fame could lead to rallying a fighting force of Yakuza for the eventual rebellion against Orochi and Kaido. And in the old days of Wano, Yakuza seemed to have been incredibly honorable, quite possibly on par with samurai. So I imagine that anybody who was loyal to Hyogoro back back then would more than likely come out in support of him now. And of course the chapter ends with Luffy getting into some shenaniganry, and I just love the look on his face as he's making to attack the guard. If you ever see that look on anybody's face, be afraid, be very afraid. But the big cliffhanger is that Queen has arrived at the prisoner mine, and whereas before I saw Luffy teaming up with Kid to very possibly overcome Queen, I'm not exactly sure what I see now. I don't think that Luffy and the Sea Stone Cuffs will be quite capable of dealing with Queen, so it looks like we'll be very much relying on Big Mom's intrusion to make things work here. In any case, I think things are about to boil over in the prisoner mine, and we should expect to escape relatively soon. And just one last thing before we end, Komurasaki's official death has been announced to the citizens of Wano. This has no real impact on my thoughts though. Once again, it would be pretty cool if Oda kept her dead and pursued a different path of storytelling for him, but I still think she just has to be alive and in hiding somewhere after plotting with Kyoshiro. But that pretty much does it for chapter 934. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the chapter. This has been the Grand Line Review and I'll see you next time.